is great. Is mayonnaise Halil? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think that's the right word, but I don't know. Manage your expectations with the new BXPN Twitter feed. Social media. Are you picking this up? Good. What we're about to embark on is going to be a new experience for both of us. This is a playthrough of XCOM using Firaxis's excellent Enemy Within expansion and the incredible fan-made modification Long War. The project of Johnny Lump and Amineri, Long War expands and improves upon almost every aspect of XCOM. And after defeating Iron Man Impossible on my own time over a year ago, it was Long War that breathed unbelievable new life into the game I'd beaten. Now it's in beta for Enemy Within, and while you'll need to read the changelog to understand just how far reaching the mod is, the quick summary is this. A much longer campaign featuring bigger squads, more and tougher enemies, more classes, more perks, more items, better shivs, squad officers, an entirely overhauled interception and strategy game, and a much longer title. We'll need to shorten that a little bit. Now we could spend an entire episode detailing the changes that Long War's made, and we still wouldn't scratch the surface. So instead, I'll try to explain it as we go. So grab your favorite XCOM Asia snack, forget what you know about Enemy Unknown, and get ready for change. This is Long War Within, Iron Man Impossible. So, welcome to another Iron Man Impossible campaign, where the strategy's made up and the meld doesn't matter. I'm your host Beagle, come on down, let's save Earth. Second wave? Don't worry about it. Long War features some new options, but the only one I enable is strict screening. By default, Long War randomizes its rookie stats, and this option simply keeps them the same, like vanilla. Iron Man Impossible is the difficulty, scripted DLCs, Slingshot and Portent are both disabled, and with Asia my birthplace and my battleground, it's time to head for China and see who's waiting for us. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. Strike one, this is central. You are free no f***ing way. Season one, MVP Soylent Green is not only in the campaign, he's literally the first soldier the game selected on the start. How do you think Soylent fans are gonna respond to Soylent's return, Soylent? You know, Biggs, I'll get back to you, I'm kinda just getting off the Jet Ranger, but I think they're gonna be pretty excited. After a few moments to compose myself... Soylent goddamn green. Long War's increased squad size means there's still five other team members to meet. People of the world, say hello to Mad Cows, Chris JSY, It Phase, Obrek, and Metalock? Oh god, please tell me you've overcome your insomnia, Metalock. Oh god damn it. With the rookie meet and greet complete, it's well past time to get down to business. And with two seasoned veterans in the team, we've got pretty good odds on saving this cafe. Restaurant? Eatery? I don't know where we are, but it's some kind of table-bearing establishment. And if the aliens think it's worth attacking, then it's worth defending. We'll accomplish this with an aggressive entry of the building to gain control of it. By taking a concealed route to the nearest side door, we'll prepare a controlled breach of the building without being spotted on the street or through the front windows. As we move, you'll notice each of our troops is carrying different equipment. Long War gives two random pieces of equipment to each rookie on your first mission, and our squad is carrying an assortment of high explosive and fragmentation grenades, flashbangs, med kits, and accuracy improving laser sights. As we set up our breach, we want those laser sighted soldiers either side of the doorway ready to fire, with the rest of the squad ready to run through the door and clear the interior. In XCOM, a properly prepared door breach is one of the most effective ways to make contact with the enemy. Stacking your squad next to your entryway maximizes how far you can move into the building and also lets you set up heavy weapons like snipers and rockets before you open the door. Metalox swings the door open and so far the building is empty. 
The squad splits into two teams with our best shooters preparing a secondary breach into the kitchen, while our grenadiers take position on the roof where they can react to contact both inside the building as well as any enemies who try to escape through the back door. Our interior team makes use of a new ability. Exclusive to assault and sniper rifles, soldiers can spend their turns steadying their weapon to boost their next shot's accuracy, meaning Idphase and Metaloc will be that much more prepared to cover the kitchen. Sure enough, today's chef special is abducted humans, and two sectoids leap the counter for cover. This is where our rooftop team can spring into action. By hiding behind the counter, the sectoids leave themselves woefully exposed to the side, and Chris JSY serves up some tasty hot lead. Kill confirmed. Mad Cows follow suit to continue the flank, and just like that, two fleshy little aliens have been formally welcomed to Earth. Throughout this, the Sectoid's drone has reacted to contact by staring idly. Its hardened shell makes it tougher to dent than its meatbag friends, but with their aim prepared earlier, it phase and Metaloc finalize the culinary cleanup. The building breach is so far a complete success, and all without Soylent firing a shot. Yeah, that's good. Good job, guys. Good job. Nice. With backpats all around, the squad needs to keep moving. Half the team prepares to infiltrate the back alley, as the other half remains on the roof to support. With the immediate exterior clear, a ladder offers our next point of advance. But it's there we spot some more extraterrestrial hoodlums. Four sectoids scramble for whatever cover they can. But with a rooftop element waiting for them, the aliens are sitting ducks. Now kills aren't guaranteed with grenades, as explosive damage is somewhat randomized in Long War. But Chris's frag flies true and stings hard. With the remaining two combatants cowering below us, we exploit our good position by covering them from the roof. And though Soylent just showers them in shell casings, Obrek shows off that high ground advantage. With only one sectoid left now and our entire squad ready, the rooftop firing line has only got nastier, and the poor little guy tries running for help. He doesn't make it, but his cries of fear and our rapid gunfire bring three more ETs running to investigate, at which point they see our squad and promptly decide to go home. But with two of them caught in the open, there's no flights home for these sectoids. Obrek mercilessly guns down the first fleeing alien, and it phase rattles off a burst into the second. But ET's still standing, and it's finally Soylent's time to shine. Kill confirmed. Yep, Soylent just pistol crit for 5 damage. Now I've since learned that Long War Beta 6 had a bug where critical damage is higher than intended, but at the time, I just assumed Soylent was some kind of god. It fists. It fists. It fists! Did you see what I just did, It fists? That is why I am the MVP and you had to pay for ice cream. Regardless of the specifics, that. Wait. Man, we are so going to this ice cream shop after the mission. Anyway, with renewed purpose, the squad covers the street and prepares for the last tango. With three rifles in an elevated position, chances are one of the team will take this sucker down. And it's Chris JSY who enforces the road rules. So ends Operation Final Spark, and with the Chongqing ice cream parlor safe for another day, the squad rides home with their complimentary sundaes. But no matter how smoothly things went, I still know that saving Earth will be a rocky road. Regardless, with a promotion screen this good, it's hard to not feel optimistic. You'll notice that each vanilla class has been split into a pair of specialities, and it's our choice as to which we pick. As a weapons candidate, Soylent will feel right at home as either a heavy machine gunner or a rocketeer rifleman. Mad Cows, as a support specialist, can opt for either a grenade-chucking engineer career or life-saving medic training. 
It phase as a tactical recruit can choose between the rapid firing infantry or the shotgun toting assault, and Metalock can become either a highly mobile combat scout or a squad site sniper. Hmm, seems familiar. With Chris and Obrek each support and weapons candidates respectively, we've got our choices laid out for us, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's handle our base. A lot of things have changed with Long War, but there's no rush to explain it. I'll just try to cover each change as it becomes important. First things first, your pilots can have names. Yep, it's pretty awesome. They also gain experience and through that improved effectiveness with each UFO killed. UFOs in Long War have both health and armor ratings, depending on their class, so we leave two interceptors with medium damage avalanche missiles and set the other two with armor-piercing stingray missiles, at the cost of a little raw damage. This should allow us to effectively engage both standard and armored UFO threats. In the laboratory, the tech tree has been radically changed, but our starting choices are still familiar. Weaponry, materials, or biology. Now I do have a long-term research plan, but for now, I'm just a huge fan of scopes, so alien weaponry is the first tick on the clipboard. In engineering, I immediately begin work on the immediately available basic shiv, and an expanded shiv ammo drum to go with it. I also immediately begin work on two shiny new satellites. There's a reason I'm not waiting to build them, but there's already a lot to comprehend here, and I don't want to drown you guys in base management on your first day, so I'll explain that when the time is right. For now, we need only begin our excavations, and our first round of base work is done. And with that, let's check out the barracks. Yep, mm-hmm, good, good, oh my goodness. Well, I guess I could only avoid the alien fighting draft for so long. And with my personal inclusion on the front lines, I'm sure to- Oh, sh Look, I'm pretty good, but with Dyslexia's inclusion, I am totally outclassed. The only thing that could make this better is if- Oh my god. So here's a joke for you longtime fans. Claymore, Dyslexia, and Soylent walk into an abductor. There's no punchline, just a lot of dead aliens. Seriously, with this many certified badasses in an already badass roster, we are starting this long war on the right foot. And after giving the recruiting officer a bonus, it's time to swing that right foot forward. Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. The aliens strike back with a vindictive raid on my home soil. Now I know you're all tired, but hang in there, because to properly understand the squad selection phase, you need to learn about fatigue. When a long war soldier goes on a mission, they'll come back with fatigue and need to rest for a few days. Now you can send a fatigued soldier out on a second mission before they're rested, but that will result in that soldier becoming exhausted, and exhausted troops will then need to rest twice as long and can't be sent on missions at all. I've yet to decide whether fighting aliens is really that tiring, or my soldiers are just scamming me. It's only been a few days, so all of our Mission 1 team is fatigued, but with Soylent and it phase only a few hours off being ready, I choose to delay the mission until they're good to go. Long War's scanning is much improved, in that it's slower, and it auto-stops itself for more events, such as a soldier becoming available. The people of Brisbane probably aren't that happy about being left to die for six hours, but hey, you can't rush saving the world, and the two non-rookies in the squad will be the pivotal factor in our ability to complete our mission. With a machine gun in Soylent's hands, I can only pray the SMZ will rise again, and it phase backs him up as our first infantryman. They each run high-capacity magazines on their weapons. These extended mags are going to give them extra shots before they need to reload, which is important for the machine gun's rapid rate of suppression and the infantryman's rapid rate of fire. With a mix of fragmentation, high explosive, and stun grenades across the rest of the team, we are ready for action. Touching down. Well, look at that, the aliens are blowing up tanks. That's great, I'm sure we'll be fine. Join us next time on the hunt for anti-tank sectoids when we begin Operation Silent Ring. Until then, have a good one.